Hi, I'm Sahil, and I'm from the technical marketing team with Anutha Networks. In the coming next 20 minutes, what I'll try to do is that I'll cover one of the latest features, which is which I've already learned from Kiran, Atom Active Service Assurance. And we are trying to bring this feature to Atom. I'll also try to run two test types today on the demo lab to understand how Atom Active Service Assurance actually works. Okay. So before we take a deep dive into Atom Active Service Assurance, I'll invariably use the word Atom Active Service Assurance or ASA, which are the same thing. I'll take a quick recap of the overall automation journey that Kiran covered in the previous session. So Kiran stated that Atom can help with the device onboarding, which is the first stage for Greenfield or any Brownfield networks. And then once the device is onboarded, we can do service orchestration with services like L2, L3 VPNs, which can be deployed. So right after service orchestration, there is the ASA. Using the ASA, you can track the service SLAs. And this is done using wide variety of tests and metrics. So this session will be focused on the ASA, which not only works from day one of service deployment, but can also continuously track the service for any threshold breach for the entire service lifecycle. Active Service Assurance in Atom uses the agents to generate synthetic traffic and if I talk about ASA features, it can execute one or more test suites at the time of service provisioning. ASA also supports ongoing validation, collects KPA metrics such as latency, jitter, or if you want to collect any packet loss data, all this can be collected using the Active Service Assurance. Finally, ASA can also be used by users to detect any abnormal service conditions like any threshold breaches, and this solution ensures that the service SLA is always maintained. It minimizes failures with regards to all new services and reduces the overall mean time to repair. I'll use a slide to take a quick look at the few of the feature highlights of ASA. So if you focus on this slide, there are three steps for running any active assurance test. These three phases are the test creation phase, the test execution, which is the second phase. And finally, Atom shows the results, which is the reporting phase. Atom includes a library of pre-built test suits and network operators can also create their own custom test suits. This again works with the workflow builder. Using the workflow builder, users can easily create their own custom test suits. There is also the concept of bring your own probes or test. So the platform is highly flexible. You can create your own custom test suits as well import into Atom instance. These tests are executed using the test agents, which is the execution phase. And the test agents could be a VM, an app, or a Docker container. Further, these agents can be deployed on-prem or in public cloud, such as AWS, Azure, etc. Now, let's talk about the reporting phase. Uh, the reporting infrastructure is customizable, and the test results can be grouped into KPIs and published on the Atom dashboards. Uh, these tests are measured against defined SLAs, and any threshold breach can be logged as an alert on Atom. So this is done our integrations uh, with uh, Atom alerts, and we also have existing integrations with workflows and compliance and Atom alarms, which are all the features of Atom. So they help deliver the closed loop remediation. Very simple example is if you have an SLA breach, maybe there is a breach of the threshold delay. So delay was set to 20 millisecond for a ping test, and there was a 30 millisecond delay which was observed in the report. So that can be logged as an alert on Atom. All right, and so he'll resolve. Go ahead and keep going. We've, we've got it all fixed. So thank you very much. But go ahead and keep going through your slides. OK. OK. So to resolve that alert, you can perform uh, the workflows. And then those workflows can be you know, uh, taking some actions on the devices, which becomes your closed loop automation. I'll progress to the next slide. OK, so this is a very interesting one. Uh, here we're talking about the service activation test. So there are multiple steps involved in a service activation test. And the step one in any service activation test is the operator creates a service order. So if I'm deploying a L3 VPN, I'll create the service order request and submit it to Atom server. So using the service orchestration module in Atom, the Atom will provision the service on the network devices, which becomes a step two. And then you can also introduce pre-checks that we talked about at this step. So if you want to check the device for any configuration mismatch or any pre-existing VRF or interface configuration, all that can be done at the service creation step. In step three, we push the service configuration to the device and Atom will start now configuring the agents with the selected test suites. For example, if you want to run five different tests after the service is created, you can uh, customize those test suites within the service order. 
Now in step four, the tests are executed and the agents upload the data to the promises database. Atom then uses the shared data for the test to generate test reports, and then these test reports are shared with the user. So to sum it up, the only effort that an operator needs to do is give the service order, which too can come from an external API or external tools, and Atom will take care of every other step of the service lifecycle, right from deploying the service to maintaining the service SLAs till you are using the service. So here, uh, we are talking about what are the tests we are planning to support and some of the tests we are already supporting. And you will also see some of these tests live in the demo today. Okay. So before we go into the demo, which is coming in the next two slides, I just want to take a few minutes to talk about the architecture of agents and the active service assurance. So in this diagram, you see there are two color codings with agent. One is blue and one is green. So the ones in blue are responsible for actually provisioning the services and monitoring the network infrastructure. And the ones in green color are the agents which generate the synthetic traffic between the server and the clients. We've also implemented RTAC and multi-tenancy to support a variety of deployment scenarios. So a few of the notable points about agents are, agents are measurement points and they are used to generate synthetic traffic. Agents can also become location aware and multi-tenant and agent can be deployed on a VM, bare metal, or cluster, and can handle many network interfaces. So you can have uh, many different interfaces on single agent and sub interfaces. And we have also given SSL-based security to agents. So Active Service Assurance, to sum it up, has a very flexible framework for creating test suites. In the app catalog, which is the leftmost panel, you will see there are individual test suites, such as ping, HTTP, wipe test, etc. And at build time, they can be packaged into your custom test. For example, if I'm creating a VPN reachability test, that can have UDP, TCP, QS, and DNS tests, which can be run in order. And then each test can further be customized by the way of test inputs, which is the second block. The operator can provide test settings. Say, I'm running a TCP bandwidth test, and I enter the minimum bandwidth threshold for 10 Mbps. And I send 50 packets, each one second apart. Now, if the throughput goes below 10 Mbps in any one second interval, which becomes a time collection window, that will be counted as an error second. Similarly, there's an other, another threshold called the severe error second that we have introduced. Let's say we set the severe error second to one Mbps. So now if the bandwidth is between one to 10 Mbps, we color code it as orange on the ES bar, which I'll show in the demo. And if it goes below one Mbps, the color coding will change to red. Now the overall test success criteria is dependent on the error second and severe error seconds that are generated out of the total seconds, which is 50 here. Many such settings can continuously be refined by the users as more and more tests are executed. Okay, now in the initial phases of deployment, you will not know these settings. So you can run the test in ad hoc mode. And then once the test results come in, you can fine tune your testing environments. Uh, this is a custom test suite. So here you can see there are two tests, which is a VPN reachability and the 5G slice variation test. So using the test, uh, which we already have out of box, like the DNS, TCP, HTTP, you can create your own custom test suites. These test suites can further have a lot of different blocks. Each block has detailed steps like issuing of some commands, running the test, waiting for a few seconds. So all those you can do using the workflow builder. And this is my last slide. Here uh, we are seeing what a test result chart actually looks like. So here, if you focus on the image number one, you will see there is an ES bar or the error second bar, and it has continuous green blocks. If the test is within the SLA thresholds, you will see the green bar. If you see an orange block, which is there in the image two and three, the metric has surpassed the error seconds. So an error second means an orange block. And then if you see a red block, that means a severe error second. So which means that the threshold for severe error second metric is breached. So taking your prior example, if the bandwidth now goes below one Mbps, you will see a red block on the ES bar. Uh, if it's one to 10 Mbps, what you will see is an orange block on the ES bar. And if it's above 10 Mbps, which is my error second threshold, it will be a green block. And if I have to talk about the test success criteria, if I set it to 20 ES, so 20 ES is my test success criteria, and I get 30 ES or SES, then the test result will fail. 
but out of the total uh, es bar if i get less than 20 error seconds or severe error seconds so 20 red and if i get 20 uh, 20 red and orange then it will be a failure if less than 20 red and orange blocks then it will be a, a success in addition users can also plot individual metrics which i'll show in the demo like the deviation metric uh, total number of packets received or the jitter metric on these stats and they can be downloaded for offline analysis as well okay so before i progress to run the test live on the demo lab i just want to spend 2 minutes to uh, walk you through the topology i'm using today so these are the agents that i'm using which is a london and paris agents and they have a vpn uh, connection between them so they are connected via vpn and then these agents are also connected to the atom control center or atom server via the management interface so i'll be using this simple topology to generate traffic between london and paris agents to run the test uh so i'll progress with the demo so what i'm uh, going to do in the next 10 or 15 minutes is that i'm trying to run two tests which is the ping and the tcp test and we'll see how this test can be run easily from atom and how we can generate the result so if you've not seen atom before uh, this is the uh, atom software and uh, i've logged into my atom instance and these are the various menus from where you can perform all the operations like the device onboarding config compliance automation now the assurance is located here and under assurance we have added service assurance and active assurance now as soon as you click on active assurance uh, this is a page that opens up so here all the different tests that you can perform are visible so if you create your own custom test suites if you create any templates all that will be visible here yeah quick question is the service assurance mostly for service providers are they finding the use cases in this or are the large enterprises also using service assurance and what are the use cases there maybe if there's various business units they have to provide a service assurance for or they're acting like a service provider themselves no you're right if it's a large enterprise that's operating like a mini service provider they find this very helpful anytime you have any sls to promise and you want to pre predict outages and remediate that's when it comes in Another question here. Looking at the test, I know we're waiting for our summary here, but uh, is this? This seems very infrastructure focused. Is that the kind of testing we're doing here? This is an APM. We're doing testing of the infrastructure end to end. Yeah, it's a layer two to layer seven. Since synthetic traffic, maybe some applications, not all of them, but as you saw, HTTP kind of applications. Yeah. So we have navigated to the assurance, and we talked about uh, active assurance. So from service assurance, once you go to active assurance, this is a page that you will see where you will find the list of all the tests that you have created and out of box tests as well. Now to run a test, it's very simple. All you have to do is just navigate to the test that you want to run. For example, I want to run a new uh, ping test, right? I click on this test, and the previous test run history will be visible on this window towards the right. So here you can see what was the previous test run history, what was the ES history, if there was any error second or a severe error second that was generated along with the metrics. Now to run a new instance, all I have to do is just click on this run button on top. So I'll click on this button. So as soon as I click on this run button, what you will see is the test, how the test is created. Now, if it's a custom test suite with a lot of different tests, you will see all those different blocks like run ping test, run DNS test, run TCP test. but since this is a singular test i am only seeing one block now first is providing the name of the instance so first i'll provide the name there are options to run the test as monitor so if you want to continuously run the test uh, you can run in monitor mode there are options to raise alerts as well so you can raise alerts for any of the sla breach or you can also raise the alert if the complete test is a fail i'll share the test with the system only and then click on this block here so as soon as i click on this block what i will see is an input form so this is a test inputs that i can customize as per my own requirements again i have to give the test name and then i choose a source probe or the source agent so now i am choosing london as my source agent and the source interface would be e0 and this would be the source ip so it's automatically taking the ip uh, when i put in the uh, e0 then i can define how many packets we want to send what is the time between each consecutive packet i can set the delay threshold and the severe delay threshold 
So let me keep it as 10 ms. These are in ms and 20 ms. Similarly, I can set the jitter or the deviation th thresholds. I'll set it again to 10 and 20 ms. And the packet loss threshold. So this is in percent, so I keep it as 20% and severe packet loss threshold as 30%. Now I have once set all the thresholds, I will set the destination for the ping request. So I'll send this ping request from London to Paris. And on Paris, I choose again each zero and then I'll get the IP address. So now once I've verified all my metrics are correct, there is also <laughs> a do not fragment. If I want to set the DNF flag, I can do that. I'll run the test. Okay. Now I see my test run is in progress and the same can also be verified from the task viewer we have built. So every task that you perform from Atom will be logged under the task viewer. So here you can see we are already running the ping test and all the subtasks related to this test. So it usually takes some time as per the number of packets and the number of seconds between each consecutive packet that uh, we are sending. So depending on the number of packets and the uh, settings for the test inputs, the test will take its time to complete. I'll do a quick refresh here. Okay, now we see that the ping test is completed and I can also see the ES history. So all is green, which means that none of the threshold was breached and the status is passed. I can also click on this test here to see these results in the window. I can see that the SLA was passed and the test was also passed. This is my ES history bar. So the SLA is calculated using the ES history. So out of the total ES history bar, if I get any red or green clocks, which is uh, any threshold breach, then the SLA will be reduced. So here I can see what is the SLA. SLA is 100% here. But here in this previous test, you see there are some red and yellow blocks. That's why SLA is zero. So none of the green blocks. And if I want to see any metric, I can see those metrics as well. So for example, I want to see the delay. What was the delay for the entire sequence of this test? Let me deselect all other metrics. Now this was the delay that was observed. So it was in this range. And if I want to download any of this metric as a CSV or a PDF, I can do that as well. So I can download a CSV and then take it offline for analysis. Are you able to, out of the Atom dashboard, are you able to, to set up integrations with uh, ITSM, so if those thresholds get uh, out of balance, you can create those uh, alerts to automatically create tickets or what have you, and if so, can you kind of show us what that looks like? Yeah, that's coming up in the next part of the demo, uh, okay. where my colleagues will uh, uh, run the closed loop automation, where you can run workflows, and using the workflows only, we have integrated with ITSM tools like ServiceNow, so any of the alert, you can send it to your ITSM tools. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more question. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Can you show us just some of the uh, some of the options you have to configure HTTP uh, tests? You don't have to go into too much detail, but I'd just be curious to see what that what that page looks like and kind of what uh, sure. what's available. I'll just quickly pick up the form for HTTP test. Thank you. Uh, well, in the meanwhile, I can just tell you a little bit about it. Uh, basically, in the case of HTTP, what we are doing is that uh, you know. In, in a given time frame and uh, in in a given interval, we are going to send consecutive HTTP requests uh, to the given uh, web server uh, of, of uh, customer's choice. And we are going to look for a 200 OK result. And if uh, we don't see that, uh, that will be counted as an error second. And uh, accordingly, you know, uh, uh, the it will be updated on the dashboard and uh, uh, otherwise, it's going to be a normal error second. Do you, do you give the option to look for specific cookies or look for certain certain keywords that show up on the page, or is it just the 200 OK? And do you also give the option to do other HTTP methods beyond just GET? Yeah, at the moment, uh, it's um, some of the reachability aspects of what are available at this time. And as we go further in this um, journey, I think we'll be enhancing it further. Thank you. Yeah, I'll just quickly glance through what have we have added for HTTPS as of now. So yeah, uh, as Praveen said, we are take, uh, doing more on these tests. So this is like uh, what we have for HTTP and uh, we are uh, continuously developing these tests to add more fields. So as of now, we check these fields and these are the uh, 
uh, timeout values that you can set uh, the error setting timeout and the ES response. So you can use uh, regex to match the ES response. Well, and so just to be clear, in this case, if if a three hundred one came back, that would be considered an, an error or a failure. Is that correct? Yeah. So we have the response code. So here you can uh, set what is the expected response. Code. Oh, neat. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. So quickly switching back to the same screen. Now, this was about the ping test. Uh, another question comes is that I don't, as a user, it's not you know very practical for me to again put in all those inputs that you saw in the form, right? All the SES, ES values, because most of these will be uh, pretty constant, right? So what I can do is I can template these tests. For example, if I want to create a template for TCP test, I can just create a template with all the inputs, which are standardized, and then store that template. So the next time I have to run the TCP test, I can just run the template and it will take all the inputs directly from the template that I've stored. There is one template that I've already stored for TCP. So let me run that template. So this is a template that I've stored. And once I click on run, similar to the ping test, again, I'll see the test workflow. And then here are the fields I need not fill because those are coming from the template itself. So here I can see what's the name of the test. And then these are the parameters that I have set. Few of the parameters in the TCP test is it's a uh, unidirectional TCP, uh, only in down direction we'll be testing. And this is the bitrate we have set, 100 kbps. And then the error second would be generated at 50 kbps. So anything uh, which is 50 would be error second, and below 45 would be severe error second, which is red. Between 45 to 50, I'll see an orange color. And then again, above 150 is orange color, and above 160, I'll see a red color. So these are the metrics that I've sent for the TCP test. And then I've also set one more metric, which is how many error second or severe error seconds I need to get in the entire test for the test to fail. So if I get 20 uh, oranges or reds, S SES or ES, then the test will fail. And the time period is 60 seconds and number of streams is one. So once I've selected all these settings, I have also given the client, I'll run this test. If this can generate tickets if like a level one um, analyst received one of the tickets. I'm assuming there'd be a link that would take them back here. You said you can create templates so that they don't have to modify all the different ping fields because that's a pretty complicated ping. But is there like a simplified screen? So like a, you know, like a level one analyst clicks on it and then they click ping or whatever on a more simplified screen to see what's going on or are they just taken to a templatized screen? Yeah, when it comes to you know simplifying things, uh, we can take it to the level where the L1 uh, engineer can you know directly give instructions directly from a portal like ServiceNow itself. Uh, but when it comes to the active assurance uh, on Atom itself, uh, this is the interface for that, and within that. Uh, we can build templates and once you click on templates, uh, the fields come pre-filled. So you just have to, you know, uh, pretty much click on run and uh, it, it starts. So again, if we're going into this from the perspective of you've had an SLL failure, a test has failed, other than bringing a resource to this or kicking off a workflow that you said you're going to cover, is there any correlation or intelligence built in that is going to help identify what might be the root cause or given that you have been involved in the provisioning process, you have CI information, is there anything, whether it's event log correlation or actual configuration analysis that is gonna to point to a root cause and help streamline that uh, remediation? Uh, yeah, so we can do some diagnostic uh, runs. So if like uh, we see that, oh, okay, there was like, uh, we can set like uh, on a metric. So if we observe that, okay, there was a delay uh, greater than 20 MS or 30 MS. So we can run some workflows to collect the diagnostic data from the device, which can see if there is any, you know, congestion on any of the interface. So things like that. But yeah, in terms of like overall, like uh, correlation, uh, the product itself will not do the correlation, but it can run the diagnostics and, you know, run the rules and whatever you want it to run and those diagnostics can be given to the user. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and, and to add to that, uh, for any test uh, that is done, uh, you can always, uh, you know, get the uh, data that was used to calculate the results. So if you want to dig in. Okay, so now uh, we ran the TCP test and this is a live stream that we are getting. So if you focus the first three bars are red, and uh, this is the reason because the bitrate we are already getting was around zero. And then it started to pick up 
and then when it was in the range you can see the greens and here again we see an orange bar in the es again the reason is between 45 to 50 so the rate was 49 kbps that's why i see an orange and this is again an orange here and orange here now all this data is used to get the sla now sla would be out of the total es bar how many are reds and oranges and that would be subtracted from the total sla that would be my sla calculation and the test fail and pass criteria is how many error seconds or severe error seconds are generated so if there are greater than or equal to 20 reds and oranges then the test will fail otherwise the test is a pass for me so what i'll do is i'll just do this and then do a quick refresh here okay now i see that the test result is a pass because i did not get more than 20 s ses or es and if i want to calculate the sla the SLA was failed because we have hard coded the SLA to be 99.5% in the product as of now. So anything which is not 99.5 or above will be shown as SLA fail. So here I can see the SLA was around 81%. And again, if you want to take it for offline analysis, you can do that. If you want to get the data table, you can do that as well. So this is a data table at each individual timestamp. What was the rate I was getting?